this Saturday. You got a big one in the flyweight division, Kai Car France versus Amir Albazi, right? And th this is a big one. I mean, it's a big one. Because when you look at the flyweight division, you got Brandon Moreno's a champ, right? He's fighting Pantoa, who's number two. Figueredo's still there, but he's probably moving up, you would think, the Bantamweight. At some point, he should. Then at three, you got Car France knocking on the door. And he's facing, although you can't see him in the rankings here, we got it all the way down to number six, Alex Perez, but he's facing number seven, Amir Albazi. And if Amir can win this fight, that's a new name uh, that's in the mix. So let's jump right into that prediction right now. In the flyweight division at UFC Vegas 74, this is your main event. Kai Cara France comes in at 24 and 10, taking on Amir Albazi, who comes in at a nice 16 and 1. And this fight is even money for entertainment purposes only. Albazi, one inch taller at five. Five, both guys pretty much in the prime of their career. Albazi, 29. Car France, he's 30. Car France is a one inch reach advantage. Both guys stand right handed. Now, Car France is more active 4.7 significant strikes per minute, 3.5 for Albazi, but Albazi has an advantage in the takedown game, landing like 2.5, 2.5 takedowns over the course of three rounds, which equates to almost a takedown every single round. But here's the trick. Car France has an 87% takedown defense, so he's going to limit a lot of those takedowns. Against Brandon Moreno, he lost by uh, TKO, uh, but it was 58-53 in significant strikes for Moreno. Very close. Car France even had a takedown in that fight. Before that, he beat Askar Askarov by decision. Big win there. He gave up two takedowns, but dominated in significant strikes. He also beat Cody Garbrandt and Rogerio Bontorin. Albazi, 66%. Takedown defense. He has wins over Alessandro, Alessandro Costa, excuse me, Francisco Figueiredo. Submission. Both of those by finish. Zalgis Zumogulov uh, and Malcolm Gordon. So he's 4 0 in the UFC. And this is a tough prediction because Albazi has such a great record, the ability to land takedowns, and Car France has 10 losses. Again, he's 24 and 10. So a lot of losses for Carl France, but he's gotten better throughout his career. He's got a lot of fights, 34 professional fights for a 30-year-old. That's incredible. So how's this fight going to go? It's going to be a pretty close fight. I think this fight goes to a decision, even though it's a five-rounder. I mean, you could get a finish here, but you got two really good fighters that are likely to go to a decision. And Albazi has good enough uh, ability to strike. He's not as good or as active as uh, Car France, but he's going to land two to three takedowns if this fight goes to a decision. He's going to keep the significant strikes close enough, and I think it's going to be a very close decision. Could go either way, really. That's why it's 50-50. It's the perfect odds, if you ask me, because it's a very tough prediction. But I like Amir Albazi to squeak out a victory here. This guy has been impressive, winning 16 of his first 17 fights. He's undefeated in the UFC, and he's reaching for the stars here in this fight, but I think he gets the job done. Albazi wins by decision on significant strikes, but mainly takedowns. He'll fight through that 87% takedown defense at Carl France to get the victory, in my opinion, to move to 17 1, flyweight division, main event at UFC Vegas 74. I guess I was feeling good and took Albazi because we're 13 and 4 so far this year on main events. So feeling good will take a a little bit of a long shot, I think, just because, I mean, Carl France is number three. He's really good. My concern for him, despite the takedown defense, which is going to be a factor, you know, it, it gives Carl France a, a window for victory if he can stop those takedowns. But I just like Albazi. I mean, 16-01, Carl France has too many losses, um, but he's still number three in the division. So that also means he's beating a lot of people, too. He's just losing some fights against really good fighters. So yeah, we'll take him to win. We'll take Albazi to move to 17-01 and jump to number three. And now you got a big player in the flyweight division. And the title will be sorted out soon. Uh, Figueredo's just hanging at number one, but I don't see him fighting again. And if Albazi can win this, he might be in line immediately for a title shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Depending on the results of a uh, Moreno versus Pantoja. You know, if that's a close one, maybe Moreno gets a, a rematch. That seems to be the way things go nowadays. So if you're Albazi, 
you really want Moreno to win. And then he's beaten number one and number two contenders in Figueredo and uh, Pantoa. So at that point, you're up next. So Albazi needs to, needs to win, and he needs a win from Brandon Moreno. And then he's in the driver's seat as far as a title shot. He's gonna fight, wait, he's gonna fight, wait, hold your breath till the end of the night. Last fight a call, UFC at its height, yeah. Bringing that thunder with all his might, saying, hey, Step up, step up, step up. wanna fight? Huh? Hold up, think twice. Ah. Gladiator assassin, reckless, no abandon. Walk through that cage, he'll leave your ass stranded. Wake up, hey, where you at? Hey, got hit in the head with a baseball bat.